Uh, that was on Apocalypse Now. We had, we had, uh, we had three little, we were on a little sort of lake by the river where we were filming. And Charlie, uh, uh, Martin, Martin and Janet Sheen, and the three kids, uh, Irene and, 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 and uh, Martin. Uh, Emilio and Charlie? Emilio and Charlie. Yeah. We're all in this little house. And the next door I was with my girlfriend. And then next to me was Martin Brando. Pretty salty house. Yeah. It's neighborhood. Not, not bad neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. Just going to grab some milk real quick. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Brando showed up late. I mean, he didn't work for the first few months. <laughs> and I had, it was, it was, it was, it was miserable because it was very humid and, and sticky and uncomfortable and no air conditioning and terrible food and bugs and, and, uh, Matter of fact, we hired our own chef and brought in our own freezers and set up our own kitchen. And it was still bad. It was still, <laughs> it was still I, 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 I lost so much weight. And I remember one time I said, I'm just going to have a salad. And I'm sitting down and the lettuce started moving. It was a bug moving. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, that's it. So I went home and I had the chef Boyardee. Remember those? Of course. I got the can, and I start opening the can, and bugs come crawling out of the thing, uh. out of a sealed can. How they get in there? I don't know. So that's what we were dealing with. It was very unpleasant. But we got to about once a month, we get R and R in Hong Kong, mm. and we get on. It was like an hour flight, and we fly to uh, Hong Kong and stay at the Peninsula Hotel wonderful hot baths and clean sheets and right downstairs in the lobby was a C's candy store and C's chocolates are my favorite and so I would buy two or three boxes of C's and bring them back and then I would ration them off to myself I I'd keep them in the refrigerator and everybody knew don't touch gray C's because you can't so on the next trip, there was yeah. no way of, yeah. and so every night I'd have one piece, I'd say, should I have a second piece? It's like, <laughs> it was heaven, yeah. <laughs> having this chocolate. And Van, Marlon Brando had just arrived, and we were friends because we'd done The Godfather, and we'd worked together on a movie years before called Candy. Yeah. And so I had known him from that. And so he, I guess he, if he likes anybody, he liked me, he was always nice to me. I came home, and it, Wednesday night, they had a show called Rich Man, Poor Man, uh -huh. TV series, Nick Nolte on TV. And everybody, I would go home and I'd get on my bed and I'd watch Rich Man, Poor Man, and I could have a C's candy. <laughs> so I came home and I walk in the bedroom and there is Marlon Brando and my girlfriend sitting at the foot of the bed playing backgammon. And he's this big. And he's eating my C's kid. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest insult. And, and By the handful. <laughs> yeah, not a piece at a time. And I said, show some balls. <laughs> Tell this guy, get the hell out of my house. I said, it's Marlon Brando. I can't do it. <laughs> That's but uh, yeah, they, they, uh, the boys next door used to come over and peek through the window and try to catch Barbara, my girlfriend, coming out of the shower or something. <laughs> One morning I got a knock on the door and it was uh, Janet. And she said, you got, this is unacceptable. You gotta come with me. I said, it's Saturday morning, Janet. What you, come with me. So we get in the car and we drive down to the set of the temple. It's the big temple yeah. for the finale of the movie where, <laughs> where Marlon Brando is yeah. and all of his people are. And we walk in and it's a garbage dump. It's, and what the art department had done is they had gotten the garbage trucks mm. in Manila to come out and dump all the trash on the set. Because he said it wanted to be authentic and have the feel of just being... And the what, smell. What if the smell was terrible. terrible. It was terrible. It was like a, it yeah. was a garbage. <laughs> and she said, there's rats running. This is not healthy. I'm not going to let Marnie work here tomorrow. So I had to get hold of the... the production designer bring him in I said we got to clean it up so we hired a bunch of guys in trucks and they came in and started cleaning it up when they were doing that the prop guy said to the production designer should we tell him about the bodies 
And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what bodies? Never mind, never mind. I know them. <laughs> they had gotten, they had found a guy in Manila who said he could give them bodies that he would take, he delivered bodies to medical schools for cadavers. He said, I'll just bring them out for you guys. <laughs> so they took me into this tent and there's like 15 oh. just gray dead cadavers laying. I said, we can't have dead bodies. <laughs> and, and I said, Francis, you, you know about these bodies? No, 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 I, I don't know anything about <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bodies. He knew about <laughs> I'm only the director. Yeah. What, what do I know about awesome looking bodies? <laughs> right, exactly. That's so lifelike. That's, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. So the military shows up. <laughs> Because they found out. Right. And, and they said, uh, this guy was robbing graves. He wasn't selling them. He was, he's in jail. <laughs> and he said, and also, how do we know you didn't have these people killed? They took our passports. I'm thinking, oh, my God, I'm never leaving the Philippines. <laughs> I'm here forever because of these bodies. <laughs> wow. And it took about a week or so to get it sorted out. Every night I was wondering if I was ever going to be able to leave the Philippines. Well, one, so there's a story in the book, Anoki and Ferrari, I believe, that talks about you had taught water skiing early on in your career to someone in Spain who ended up being helpful for the Valkyrie scene. Isn't that right? He was actually my roommate. Oh, okay. Well, the, my roommate was a Russian prince in Switzerland. <laughs> and he, yeah. we, he, he was, we shared a little house. And his best friend was Juan Carlos. And uh, Juan Carlos used to hang out with us. And uh, Juan Carlos, an Italian, another Italian count, Giovanni Volpi, all these, uh, I was in the, with all these jet set people in Lausanne, Switzerland, going to school. I, I couldn't even speak French when I first arrived there. But I got to know them all because of water skiing. And that was just taking off in, in Europe, water skiing, and they were all, all the wealthy jet set royalty. They were all buying these very expensive, beautiful boats and all learning to water. So he had to be rich, and they had a water ski club. And so I would go down and hang out at the water ski club and just, you know, have a Coke and watch them all water ski. And one day when I was I said, would you like to come on the boat with us? Someone said, well, would you like to ski? Would you, would you, would we do? Yeah. I said, yeah. And you know, I'm skiing barefoot and backwards and I'm not skiing. <laughs> Do the skins and, and, and all of a sudden I was their best friend. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> and that's amazing. how I got to meet all these kids. Yeah. So when we were in Philippines trying to get the, the uh, helicopters, I was there for like three weeks and couldn't. I get get past this minister of tourism to the minister of defense to the minister. I couldn't get anywhere. I was getting lots of run around, lots of stories, and I ran into Giovanni Volpi, the the guy who was partners yeah. with the Juan Carlos and Zhu, my Russian friend. And he, and he said, "What are you doing?" I said, "Well, we're we're making a movie." Uh, and he had heard of me. He do he, he do he remember I'd done The Godfather, and uh, so. He said, well, come with me for dinner tonight. And I go out to meet him, and, and there's this, these cars with flags up on the front fender. <laughs> Whoa, this is... And we go to the Mount Calab, the, the uh, Marcos' palace, and go in there have this big dinner with a turkey and a ham and all roast beef, and, and there's about 10, 15 people. Marcos and Imelda over there. <laughs> and about halfway through dinner, uh, Giovanni said, uh, Gray did The Godfather, and uh, they're here, and they want to do a movie here in your country, and they need some helicopters. Who's he talk to? He said, talk to this guy, and he hands me a piece of paper. The guys called me the first thing in the morning. He said, whatever you need. <laughs> that's how we got to hell. That's and that's how, how you produce yeah. Apocalypse Now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how it works over there. That you know somebody you know. That's how it works everywhere. Yeah. That's right. how it works. Right. Yeah. But now their helicopters flew. They were all broken down. And so we had to go to Bell Helicopter in Fort Worth. And we brought guys over in mechanics and they sent it over parts. As soon as we get one of their helicopters working, it would take off to go fight the war down in Mindanao. 
And so we were having a hard time keeping yeah. those helicopters. But we got their whole Air Force up and running. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he wanted to the cost That's of why one he classic to speak to you. Yeah. Yeah. movie. Yeah. He's like, yeah, here, yeah, I'll call you tomorrow and you'll build my army for my Air Force right. for me. This podcast was presented by the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, who've been telling Oklahoma's story through its people since 1927. Follow them online at oklahomahof.com and definitely on Instagram at oklahomahof. Catch you next episode. Cheers.